Annyeonghaseyo everyone, I'm Miss Tiffany and welcome back to lesson 2 of K-Club. Before we start, let's review what we talked about last week. Last week we talked about greetings. Do you guys happen to remember what those words were? We learned hello. And hello in Korean is 안녕하세요. 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 Then we learned hello, but for answering the phone. And that was 여보세요. 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 The next word was nice to meet you. And nice to meet you was 만나서 반가워요. 만나서 반가워요. 만나서 반가워요. 만나서 반가워요. The next word was how are you? And how are you in Korean is 잘 지내서요? 잘 지내서요? 잘 지내서요? 잘 지내서요. And last but not least was goodbye. And goodbye was 잘까요? 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 Now that we have reviewed the words from last week, we can now learn new words in our lesson too. And this week's lesson is all about manners, food, and eating culture. We all know that food is an important essential to our bodies. Not only that, but food is just delicious to eat. Everyone loves food. So in this video, we're going to explore some avenues as far as in culture, restaurant culture, and food terms in Korean. But before we start, it's important to learn some basic manners. You can't go wrong with learning manners. Using proper manners will get you far in life. Sprinkle some please here, Sprinkle some thank yous here. It just makes the whole world go around. So the first word we're going to learn is, please give me this. Please give me this. And please give me this in Korean is, 이건 주세요. 이건 주세요. Let's break that down real quick. That's, 이건 주세요. 이건 주세요. 이건 주세요. 이건 주세요. What's special about that phrase is that there are two different words that I think are important for us to know. 이건 means this or this thing. So 이건 is a noun. A noun for thing. And 주세요. 주세요 is the verb. And that verb means, please give. Ju is the root word, and ju is give. And seyo is what we add at the end to make it polite. Remember in the last video, we talked about yo and the three different levels of speech? Casual, polite, and honorifics. The one that we're going to focus on is polite. It's easier to correct yourself when you're not supposed to use yo as opposed to correcting yourself when you were supposed to use yo. So let's be conscious and remember to use yo. The next word on our list is excuse me. Now the Korean language has multiple ways to say excuse me, pardon me, and such things like that. But what makes this one a little bit different is that it has multi-usage. This word can mean that over there, or it can also mean excuse me. In this case, for this lesson, we're going to use the meaning for excuse me. And the word for that is Tokyo. 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 Tokyo is a great way to get someone's attention, especially when you're at a restaurant and you need a waitress assistance. A simple Tokyo will do the trick and is both polite and also get what you need to say across. Now the next word on our list is I'll do it. 
I'll do it. What's great about this word is that it accentuates that you'll take over a task for someone. Remember what I mentioned back in the last episode, that Korea is surrounded by a principle of respect as well as kindness. So there's no better way to show both respect and kindness than by doing a favor for someone. So the word for I'll do it is Hageo. 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 Let's break that down. Hageo. 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 Let's take that word and let's break it apart for a second. Ha is a verb for to do, and ge represents the present tense for future. So technically, you're really saying, in the future, I'll do. But in retrospect, the word ultimately translates to, I'll do it. So next time you see someone who may need your assistance, just take the time to say, ha de geo, I'll take care of it for you. I'll do it. All right, so the next word is probably the most simplest word that you'll learn. And that is yes. And yes in Korean is ne. 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 And if we're going over yes, then we might as well go over no. And no in Korean is anio. Anio. A ni Yo, a ni yo, a ni yo. But hold on, there's something different about ne and a ni yo. From all the words that we have reviewed from last week and this week, every single word had yo at the end, except for yes. What makes yes different from all the other words? Good question, you may ask. Ne does not need a yo at the end because it's already in its polite form. Because it's already in its polite form, there's no reason to add an extra yo at the end. Because ne yo is weird. So let's keep that in mind. Ne is already polite, and it doesn't need the extra yo at the end. Having yes and no in your vocabulary is always important to have. They're the best way to express what you want and what you don't want. What you mean, what you don't mean. What you understand, what you don't understand. There's so many things that we can do with yes and no. Another important manner phrase that we're going to learn is thank you. Thank you. Thank you in Korean is 감사합니다. 감사합니다. Yeah, that's a longer word than the other words that we have reviewed. So let's take the time to break it down. Thank you in Korean is 감사합니다. 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 There is another word to express thank you in Korean. This word is equally used just as 감사합니다. And that word is 고맙습니다. 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 감사합니다. And 고맙습니다 means the same thing and also holds the same weight. So you can use either 감사합니다 or 고맙습니다. Either or thank yous would do. I personally use 감사합니다. So I always lean towards that one but to each his own. As great as it is to thank people, it is also important to show remorse. So that's why we're gonna go over I'm sorry. And I'm sorry in Korean is Mia hapnida. Mia hapnida. Mi an hapnida. Mi an hapnida. Although mi an hapnida is a good way to say I'm sorry, it is not the only word to express I'm sorry. Another word that can be used is Dre Soham Nida. Dre Soham Nida. Dre Song Ha Nida. Dre Song Ha Nida. Dre Soham Nida. Dre Soham Nida has a little bit more weight than Mia Hap Nida, but they both equally mean the same thing. I personally lean towards Dre Soham Nida because that was the first I'm sorry phrase that I had learned. And it's the most frequently used. But as far as deciding which I'm sorry to use, I would say lean towards the Dre Soham Nida as opposed to the Mia Hap Nida. All right, so those were manners. So before we get into eating and restaurant culture, 
I wanted to throw in a bonus. So let's go over some fruits and food. What's the point of learning all of these manners and eating etiquettes if you don't even know words for some food? So we're going to explore some of them. Let's get going. Before we get to the individual fruit, the word for fruit itself is quaya. Quaya. Qua ia. Quiet. The first fruit is apple. And apple in Korean is sagwa. Sa gua. Sagwa. Then we have banana. Banana is banana. 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 Orange is orangey. 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 Strawberry is dargi. 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 Grape is podo. 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 Watermelon in Korean is suba. 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 Lemon is lemon. 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 Mango is mango. 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 Kiwi is kiwi. 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 Blueberry is blueberry. 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 Cherry is cherry. 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 Pineapple is pineapple. 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 Lime is lime. 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 And melon is melon. 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 Now on to the food. The Korean word for food itself is mm chic. Mm chic. Mm chic. Mm chic. Now for foods that I had at the top of my head. Pizza is pita. 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 Rice is bop. 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 Now what makes the Korean word for rice so special is that it can be used as a general term for food. So instead of just using umshik, you can just say bop. And people will understand that bop could mean rice or food in general. The word for bread is bang. 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 The word for hamburger is hamburger. 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 Cake is cake. 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 Coca Cola is cola. 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 The word for water is mul. Mool. Mool. The word for tea is cha. 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 Coffee is kopi. 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 And for ice cream is ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. So you might be wondering why most of these Korean words for foods sound very similar to English words. There is a thing called Konglish, and Konglish is the combination of English and Korean. Konglish are English words that have been adopted into the Korean language and culture. So words that we are familiar with, Coca-Cola, cake, and ice cream, are borrowed and mixed and mingled into the Korean language. Therefore, it becomes new sounding words which are adjusted to the sounds in the Korean language. So ice cream becomes ice cream. Cake becomes cake. And Coca-Cola simply becomes cola. Maybe in the future lessons, we will come across more Konglish words. I hope you guys continue to watch so we can discover more of those together. So we learn our manners, and now we need to know how to put those into practices. But before we can do any of that, after we'll all of this talk about food, I'm sure you guys are getting hungry. So what's the most appropriate thing to do right now? Is to learn how to express you're hungry. And the Korean word that means I'm hungry is 
배고파요. 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 But before you start eating, you must give thanks for the meal that you're about to receive. And that phrase is, I'll enjoy the meal. And to say that in Korean is, 잘 먹겠습니다. 잘 먹겠습니다. 잘 먹겠습니다. But why isn't it 잘 먹겠습니다? Let me answer that for you. The phrase 잘 먹겠습니다 is already polite. Actually, in fact, it's an honorifics. Remember those three levels of speech? Casual, polite, and honorifics? 잘 먹겠습니다 is all the way on the third level, the most polite one. So because that phrase is already an honorifics, it does not need yo because it has surpassed that level. That's just one of those other special cases that we've been talking about. So before you eat your meal, say 잘 먹겠습니다. And remember that you don't need to add a yo at the end because the phrase is in a higher speech level. Honorifics. Now let's move on to the action of eating. The word that means to eat is 먹고요. 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 To say that something is delicious, you can say 맛있어요. 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 And if we're learning to say that the food is delicious, then we might as well learn how to say food isn't delicious. And that word is 맛없어요. 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 So when it comes to 맛있어요 and 맛없어요, it's the ending of the word. So 맛, 맛 means flavor and taste. And both 맛있어요 and 맛없어요 has that. But the 있어 and delicious means to exist. And 없어 and not delicious means to not exist. So technically you're saying the flavor does or does not exist. 맛있어요. 맛없어요. The flavor exists. The flavor does not exist. Is delicious. Is not delicious. If the food is delicious and you want some more, you can say 더 주세요. 더 주세요. 더 주세요. 더 주세요. Remember the word 이건 주세요 that we just learned at a moment ago? And how I said that 주세요 means please give? Well, this is the same case here. But 더 and 더 주세요 means more. So in retrospect, please give me more. But last but not least, when you're finally done eating those delicious foods and you've had enough of eating, the word to express to be full is 배불러요. 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 Now we're going to be talking about different aspects as far as the culture when it comes to eating. For instance, when eating with somebody, it is important to let the oldest person eat first. Because remember when I said that Korea is based off the principles of respect? This is another situation where that is implied. You will patiently wait until they have eaten first, and then you can follow after. It's kind of like in the Western culture when it comes to birthday parties. You can't eat the birthday cake until the birthday person eats theirs first. So it's kind of like that. Also, when eating at a restaurant, there's no tipping. Yep, no tipping. You don't have to tip for the services. You can just pay for your meal and leave. Another thing that's different from Western cultures is that you can deliver literally anywhere. Yes, anywhere. You can be at the community park, at the community pool, outside in the streets of business, and food will still be able to be delivered to you. In Korea, there are a lot of delivery services. So oftentimes, you'll see a lot of delivery motorcycles. When I was over there, I ordered chicken on chicken on chicken. I ordered from so many chicken places, I lost count. The delivery is fast, 
and convenient there. Another thing that I ate over there a lot was kimpi tang. Kimpi tang is a combination of kimchi, sweet and sour pork, and pizza. So yeah, that might sound strange, but hear me. It is so good. It comes in a huge big platter, kind of like in a pie crust, except it's pizza crust. And inside the dish is kimchi, onions, other vegetables, pork, and lots of cheese. This dish was really good, and about five of us ate out of it. And we still had enough for like three more people. This thing was huge. So chicken and kimpi tang, best delivery. Anyways, totally off topic, back to the culture. Something that is present besides the main dish are panchans. Panchans is the general term for side dishes. So for every main dish, there are a plethora of side dishes. But the two staples that you will always see is rice and kimchi. Rice and kimchi are almost always present in every Korean meal. The rice is usually sticky and kimchi is fermented cabbages. So there you have it, you guys. We had just finished lesson two. I hope you guys enjoyed. And thank you for sticking around with this long video. I hope this was helpful for all of you and that you guys have learned something new. Until next time, Ciao, Kyle.